Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tori Piglisi, and today we have a special segment about the history of broadcast journalism. We are constantly surrounded by news stories and coverage of events, but how did it all begin? And was it always like this? The history of broadcasting grew as time went on, and it plays a key role in all of our lives. I plan to go into broadcast journalism when I graduate, and already have a lot of experience from both my high school's TV production class and here at FGCU with Eagle Media. I also found plenty of research that helped fill in important information on this topic. The idea of broadcast journalism came around less than 100 years ago, but the impact it has had on us has been crucial as the world around us has changed. We'll start at the early days of broadcasting, then go into the transition to TV and the rise of television networks, and finally reflect on today's world of broadcast journalism and the influence social media has had on us. First, let's look at where it all began. In the early days of broadcasting, the way people got news was from the radio. Before the 1920s, radios were primarily used to contact ships out at sea. Because communication wasn't clear, operators relied on Morse code to send messages to the ships. During World War I, the importance of the radio increased as the military began exclusively, exclusively using it. With radios, military leaders could send and receive messages to each other in real life without the need for a physical messenger, making it much more convenient for the wartime. After World War I, people began purchasing radios for personal use at home, which led to broadcasting companies to slowly rise up across the world. The KDKA became America's first radio station officially licensed by the government, and is in fact still used today. The first radio advertisement came out in 1923, released by AT&T, and shortly after that, CBS and NBC were created. Home-built radio receivers grew in popularity, as not only were radios used for the news, but they also provided entertainment for families. Over in Britain, radio broadcasts began in the early 1920s with the BBC and spiked in popularity when the newspapers went on strike a few years later, leaving the radio to be the public's source of news. And then World War II came along, where radios once again proved to be an important asset to militaries. They also became the fastest way for news from the war to travel back home. Various journalists helped relay the news of the day to their viewers as the war progressed on. According to the article, A Brief History of Broadcast Journalism, written by New York Film Academy alumni Helen Cantalaftis in 2015. In a survey then taken in 1940, 65% of respondents had stated that their radio was the preferred source of news. Radios were also used as a rallying source for the government to gain support for the war. Once the war was over, the world began to enter a new era of innovation and inventions. During the mid-40s, the radio was left behind and replaced by a new source of entertainment and news, the television. When TVs were first introduced, they were only limited to higher income families who could afford it at the time, but there was a massive boom in the industry once World War II ended. In the book, That's the Way It Is, A History of Television News in America by Charles L. Ponce de Leon, it states, In 1946, there were approximately 20,000 television sets in the U.S. By 1948, there were 350,000, and by 1952, there were 15.3 million, less than 1% of American homes that had TVs in 1948 and a whopping 32% did by 1952. More TV stations began popping up across the U.S., and by 1952, there were 108 stations in 65 cities. By 1955, there were almost 500 stations. Most of these stations provided news reports only once or twice a week, largely based on what CBS had done during its news program for that week. News programs began to increase in length and aired more often throughout the week and shaped how Americans thought and felt about certain events. With more news programs came more opportunities to share newsreels and segments about uncomfortable events. As time went on, live broadcasts became valuable tools to provide real-life coverage of events, both locally, nationally, and even globally. Various events have been viewed live across the world, letting anyone watch and see firsthand what happened. Examples include Queen Elizabeth's coronation, the Watergate scandal and Nixon's hearings, the O.J. Simpson trial, and the 9-11 attacks. While the world of broadcasting expanded, so did the entertainment world and the idea of an escape from the real world. Many sitcoms that aired during the 50s and 60s showcased the ideal family and didn't acknowledge any political issues or current events going on, making it seem like a utopia for many viewers. These sitcoms grew in popularity in the 1960s, where constant stressful events such as the Vietnam War or the Cuban Missile Crisis were being discussed constantly on news programs. Then with the 70s, the ideal family turned into one that better reflected America, and sitcoms started discussing important topics that were going on. Shows such as Saturday Night Live were also created to make light of current political situations and poke at our current world. 
Little do we know during these times that in another 40 years, we will go from watching a news story on our TV to watching clips of breaking stories on our phones. Today, we can just whip out our smartphones and watch the latest stories in a flash and find information on websites and social media. Online news outlets began to grow in the 80s and have exploded since. In 1983, a system called Viewtron was created by the newspaper company Knight Riddler to send their readers electronic news before they got their papers in the morning. While Viewtron did gain a few thousand subscribers, it wasn't very successful. It wasn't until the early 90s, when the World Wide Web was introduced, that the internet became a source for news stories. Various news networks launched websites right at the start and grew from there, most of them still being used today. By the late 2000s, more families had subscriptions to online news sources rather than actual newspapers, which led to the rapid decline of newspaper companies. On top of this, the introduction of smartphones changed not only how people got their news, but how they interacted with it. Social media has also played a large role in how we get our news in today's world. Any breaking stories are usually first seen across social media websites, such as Instagram or Twitter. According to the 2016 Academic Journal article titled, How Do Television Networks Use Twitter? Exploring the Relationship Between Twitter Use and Television Ratings, written by Wan Wang, it is stated, Furthermore, results of this study documented a significantly positive relationship between television networks' extent of Twitter use and their program ratings, which was consistent with Nielsen's findings. In particular, the new number of tweets, including hashtags, public messages, retweets, and responses were significantly and positively associated with the program's ratings. Various news networks have social media accounts and actively engage with viewers, which in return helps gain more popularity and publicity. Of course, the news programs are still popular and many viewers tune in to watch the morning or evening shows, but the use of social media has helped cater to the viewership. And the craziest part is that there's so much more that will happen in the next decades that can completely change how we get our news again. Broadcast journalism has been in our lives for less than 100 years, but it continues to make an impact on society as the world keeps changing. From the early days of radio broadcasting to the rise of the television and news networks, today with social media, we have been under the influence of broadcast journalism for a long time. While we may not be able to envision how we'll be getting our news another 50 years from now, we have come a long way and will continue to push where we can go next. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Tori Piglisi and have a great evening.